uh, welcome back to a new episode of Impact Design. I'm very pleased to introduce today Philip Boyan from Forbel Travels Guide, uh, who has an amazing background, but I'll let him introduce himself. So Philip, uh, I'm really uh, very pleased to have the interview with you today, and I would love you to, inter to, to kind of give us a bit of your background um, for everybody that's uh, watching our episodes. Well, hello, Yasmin, and hello, everybody. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and thank you, Yasmin, for inviting me, of course. So I've been now with Forbes Travel Guide for about, um, for about uh, three years, and what we do is we verify luxury, and that means to us that we support, we champion, and we celebrate all those with a passion for extraordinary service. So each year, we evaluate over 2,000 hotels, restaurants, and spas in over 72 countries. And our reputation is based on integrity. And why is it based on integrity? Because our professional inspectors book, stay, and pay like every normal guest. A hotel evaluation takes two nights, three days, and over 900 standards are evaluated. It is pretty tough to achieve the five-star Forbes Travel Guide rating. And currently, there are only 282 hotels worldwide that have achieved that accolade. The ratings are absolutely not for sale. They have to be earned. We also support different businesses, such as cruise lines, private jets, private yachts, luxury retail, private villas with service excellence and leadership training, quality assessments, and standard development. And our ambition is that one day, everybody will be able to experience genuine five-star service everywhere, every day. Thank you very much. Um, before we go into sustainability, which is, you know, like a subject of all of my episodes, let me just ask you in a very, you know, few sentences, maybe what are the main factors you consider in your ratings? If you would say the top five or what is like um, the essence of, of it? Right. That's a very good question. Um, the FTG rating system is founded on the philosophy that a true luxury experience is about how a property makes their guests feel. As such, all-star uh, all ratings are computed by an algorithm that places 75% weight on service standards and only 25% weight on facility standards. This is, of course, not to infer that the facility is less important. It's critical and an ongoing significant investment in FF&E, such as linens, quality furniture, artwork, form the foundation of a luxury experience. However, intuitive staff that are always thinking a few steps ahead for every guest is what our standards are also carefully designed to measure. To do so in a way that allows geographical and cultural nuances, as well as the personality of the individual brands to shine through. FTG standards are not a checklist, but they are exacting. Excellent. Well, I think, uh, like you said, uh, it is something that um, I would imagine that a lot of hotel brands and hotels are striving to achieve because it does make a difference for a for guest to see that there has been, I, I'm 100% sure it makes a huge difference for the hotel guest. And the well, yes, man. One of the reasons why we put so much accent on the uh, emotional aspects of, uh, of service is that uh, Take yourself as an example. Would you ever go back to a beautiful hotel with terrible service? Yeah, no, I don't think so. No. But would I go back to a hotel with absolutely fantastic service where the facilities are, they're good, but they're not fantastic? Absolutely, right? Yeah. Okay. Service makes the difference. Our business is about emotions. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. Um, and we had a chat uh, about sustainability. And I, let me just start before we go more into the subject. What do you think of sustainability in general in the hospitality sector? And have you noticed from all your experience globally uh, an increased effort from hotels to become more sustainable? Well, that's a bit of a mixed answer, right? Uh, over the last year, and certainly during the height of the pandemic, um, it's been tough for hotels, right? Uh, as you know, cash is king. It's been hard uh, to continue with, with some of the sustainability efforts. Um, but what is clear and more than ever is that the commitment to protect the planet remains top of mind for luxury travelers and many luxury properties. So what we have done in Forbes Travel Guide, we've been working on our own set of sustainability standards for over a year now. And we are preparing to make our public announcement on April the 22nd, which is also Earth Day. Um, Hotels have more high quality options to them uh, than open to them than ever before. 
Um, and we do see uh, an increase in efforts around everything from high quality water solutions, plastic free bath amenities. And a good example, for example, is Peninsula. Peninsula was the first company to achieve five star Forbes rating at every single one of their hotels. The first one ever. And last November, Peninsula launched a new bespoke line of sustainable destination inspired guest amenities. Uh, the packaging is 99.9 .9 petroleum plastic free and the fragrances tell the story of each hotel's individual location. And the entire concept was created by La Bottega, one of the world's most bespoke and creative guest amenity producers. And of course, one of Forbes Travel Guide's respected brand officials. Uh, La Bottega also created sustainable product lines for Four Seasons and Mandarin Orient. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, I think that's a trend that is going to be more than a trend, but it's going to be part of uh, every company's you know, requirement. Um, if you would, is there anything, I know you were going to announce it on the 20 in April. Uh, is there anything that you can say, like two examples, what is the integration of sustainability protocol? Is there anything you can share with us or is it all going to be uh, disclosed only um, later this month? No, 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 no. Um, as I mentioned, our standards are being publicly announced later this month, but we are in the field using these standards now. So we're doing some trials with um, hotel evaluations and we want to assess what properties are doing today. So currently, the standards will not be factored into a star rating award a property can earn, but it is our intent to do so over time. Uh, it's also our intent to grow and develop the sustainability standards much further because this is a work in progress, of course. Uh, our inaugural set of sustainability, sustainability standards will look at all the segments of a hotel operation. They are designed to assess everything from food and beverage program to how much a property may have reduced or eliminated its use of single use plastics. Um, and as guests, as guest service experts, we wanted to ensure any sustainability requirements enhance the guest experience, but also spoke directly to what is most impactful when it comes to sustainability. And as such, we've worked in collaboration with acclaimed hotelier, sustainability consultant, Hervé Houdre, and of course, very important, our standard advisory committee, which is made up uh, of 20 of the top and most experienced luxury hoteliers around the world. That's, uh, that's very impressive. Well, we're looking forward to the announcement and I think it's a very good step in the, you know, towards uh, the, the future where uh, hopefully a lot of the hotels will be inspired by. Uh, if you would say, do you think that today when you were saying, of course, we're going through a pandemic and still the, the hotels have to you know, recover from this one year of stop, uh, stopping kind of the whole hotel industry. But do you think there's, uh, is it many financials in the way of the hospitality world to become more responsible or be a more hesitant? Does it always come down to finances or do you think there are other reasons for that? Well, finance, finances are definitely um, a very important reason. Uh, several years ago, we began to see hotels commit to environmentally friendly services, such as zero emissions house cars, improving lightning, lighting functions, air and water quality options, even bottling their own water at source. But these efforts come, of course, with a cost. And uh, being broadly sustainable can be budget prohibitive for an average operator, notably after the challenges uh, that the year 2020 uh, presented the hospitality with, the hospitality business with. But even our own research into the cost of bottled water proved the price point, proved that the price point for a sustainable solution was three or four times more expensive than a typical product. So after costs, education, uh, knowing how to navigate what it really means to operate a sustainable property is completely overwhelming sometimes. And access to experts that can help operators navigate their choices is critical. Yeah. But not every property has access to their own sustainability ex uh, experts or in-house teams that work on this uh, issue on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but I must say, though this is becoming increasingly more common, hoteliers are busy than ever before, and tackling sustainability is not always the top priority. Uh, the overall movement is definitely uh, going into that direction, and especially now that the recovery is starting to uh, gain momentum. Well, I, I totally agree. And you know, we've been researching on uh, sustainable materials for quite some time. And uh, this is something where we are really 
uh, working on integrating it into hotels. As you know, hoteliers are very busy with many other aspects of running hotels and making them successful. So I think it is a bit of the task of designers, advisors, architects to come up with uh, innovative solutions and help them on the journey to become Absolutely. sustainable. Let's yeah. get to the question about design, because you see, I mean, obviously design is a part of what you see when you go and see all these hotels. What are some of the factors that you feel are missing in most hotel designs? If you would criticize something and with all the you know, hotels you have seen around the world. Is there anything that you would, that stands out that you think this should have been done better or should be more, uh, you know, more tackled? Well, what we see, what we see quite often, Yasmin, is that um, the hotel design should be designed from a hotel's, from a hotel's point of view. In other words, the hotel uh, should be designed for the people, right? And for the ease of use. Um, and this is why we continue to have standards that look to see the room as a, as a place to sit and relax other than the bed and that lighting is comfortable and convenient, no matter the task the guest is completing. It's easy to tell if a designer has thought through how a variety of guest types may truly use the room. Uh, even down to the placement of a towel rack, which is often just a touch too far from the shower or from the bathroom, or a beautiful flower arrangement that perhaps blocks the view of the TV when you lay in bed. However, more often than you would think, a guest may not be able to put away all items of clothing or have quite enough space on the bathroom countertop. Perhaps the in-room lighting system is very cool, but decidedly challenging to operate. And you long for an old fashioned normal switch, especially by the bedside that switches everything off in the room, except for the air conditioning and the TV. Uh, we continue to see many wonderful uh, design advancements, but we always are looking at things from the guest perspective and for the guest comfort and convenience. And sometimes less is more. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And some of the points, you, uh, the aspects you pointed out, I totally agree. I mean, you come into many rooms that you have to take 20 minutes to turn off light uh, because you cannot find the light switches. And if it's not, it has to be a human centric design. You know, that's how I call it. You have to be a child to an older person have to be able to find their way around in a hotel room. And that's yeah. kind of, you have to make your own testing when you design to make sure that is the way. Absolutely. It's like a few years ago when uh, to connect to the Wi-Fi was like launching a nuclear weapon. Remember that the yeah. codes that we had to use were just oh, amazing. Yeah. Thank God that that has changed. But also what's important for me in the design is the sense of place, right? And I know sense of place is a very big cliche. And recently I spoke to the team of Aman. Um, I did a little, uh, a little talk to them. Um, and I love the way in which Aman has redefined sense of place. So for Aman, here is what sense of place means. Meaning, peace, connecting people with the spirit of the place, places with an extraordinary past and now. No, it's a, it's a beautiful summary. It's beautiful, right? right? Absolutely. And, and, and what I think, uh, Yasmin, is that sometimes designers should put more thought in it uh, as to how important the support of the local community is to the hotel that they are designing, yes. right? Because the design needs to have a very strong local feel, represent the destination's culture and way of life. Um, if that is achieved, the hotel becomes the meeting place for locals generating, of course, an ongoing source of revenue. Uh, local people can be your biggest ambassadors, but only yeah. if they feel welcome and comfortable at the hotel. I totally agree. I mean, I think you are 100% right. And for me, uh, the excitement is to, to, to study a country, especially when you work internationally, that you study a country. Sometimes as an outsider, you see more beauty and more you know, aspects than somebody who's always in the country. That's Absolutely. where you work internationally. And you have to, it's the, the storytelling of... For me, it's a combination of what is the beauty of the history of the place that you can research and find out and then to combine it with something unique for that property that, you know, guests will remember. But it, it's when yeah. you talk about sustainability. For me, it's also local culture, local food, local, you know, materials. It's totally. more than just, you know, a piece that's recyclable or something. It's much more. Yeah. And one thing that's also sometimes overlooked is the role of the employees in the design, yeah. right? It's the employees that have to bring the design to life. And what does that mean? They play a very important role in connecting the visitors with the destination, um, but also by the way they speak, by their body language, the language they use, and especially the uniforms, right? I, what I never understand is why is it that uh, a total hotel is designed, there is a full concept, 
but then afterwards, other people are going to design the uniforms. Yeah. For me, that doesn't make sense, right? It should all be part of the total package of the total concept of what you want to achieve, right? I, I totally agree. And may, I maybe have shared with you that I'm working on a hotel uniform design from ecological materials, from recycled mm -hmm. materials. And I think absolutely, but you know, I see not only the uniforms, I see so often lighting design to be separately contracted. And I think if you do an interior design or architecture, lighting and color and material, it all goes together. You can't just design something and somebody else comes in and makes a lighting concept. It has to be together because the lighting makes your design visible and makes structure and materials visible. So that's absolutely what I've seen. Uh, what I've seen quite often is that the designer of the hotel, the head designer of the hotel hires a lighting designer to fit into his concept. Right. Uh, but it's not like a complete different lighting designer that doesn't understand what the concept should achieve. Yeah, for me, lighting design is one of my passions, and I, very important. I shared with you if you you would probably agree if you would I would I would claim that ninety percent of the lighting in hotel bathroom is wrong because the lighting comes from above. You have a shadow for for men; it's difficult to shave. For women, they can put their makeup. So the lighting, you know, I've I've done a lot of uh, production studios in Hollywood when I lived in LA, and it's the most important is the light comes from the front, and you have a very you know a very nice harmonious lighting and no shadow. And this, I mean, most hotels have still just the spots coming from the ceiling, you go into the bathroom. Yep. And then also, you know, it's a psychological element to me. Usually before you go and meet someone or you go out of your room, the last moment you just go into the look towards the mirror and look at yourself. And then if you don't look good, it doesn't give you a good feeling leaving your hotel room. It's a uh, I, I can only agree, Jasmine. I've been in, uh, I visited in my first year and a half uh, with Forbes Travel Guide, I visited 340 hotels. So I've seen a few bathrooms. Um, and it, I can't agree more. Lighting in the bathrooms is the biggest is the biggest shortfall, uh, and also people don't people don't realize how important the bathroom is. It's the first place you visit in the morning, right? And if you feel good and you have the proper lighting and you have the proper space to put your amenities, and I love large bathrooms. It's it's absolutely it's so convenient and it, it makes me feel so comfortable. But I can't agree more. Bathrooms uh, for me are key. And I think the last element before we are coming to an end, I wanted to ask you because, you know, we have been experimenting with multi-sensory design, integrating scent and sound. And I think it's a very exciting time to, to really further this more because that's your spiritual experience. I've been, for example, in so many luxury spas, and I don't know if you would agree, then there is no scent. I mean, you want to go, and then also, you know, you're in a country, if it's Asia or if it's the Middle East, you want to have different scent because you want to be reminded where are you and not just to be in a, you know, like the airport music, it's always the same kind of music, it's the same air. So I think these are elements that I have been not really uh, taken into consideration and where we are, you know, like at the forefront, we've been working with this for quite a long time. Well, I agree again, because uh, in our standards for spas, uh, scent, uh, lighting, sound, all the emotions uh, are a very important part of our, um, of our uh, standards for spas. And, and obviously I can assure you, it's, if you want to feel comfortable in the spa, all the elements need to be right because this is a place of peace. This is a place of calm. This is a place of regeneration. So it is totally, totally important. Yeah, I, I agree. It has to be a holistic experience and that's yeah. what makes it uh, truly special. So uh, at the end of it, I ask everybody, what is the impact you think you want to have on design in the hospitality sector? And not just design, you know, we're talking about your impact in general on, on your sector, because it's a very important sector in, you know, in the world. Well, we've been, it's been a difficult time, Jasmine, and the uh, Forbes Travel Guide was no exception, uh, because uh, clearly our trainers couldn't travel to train, um, our inspectors couldn't travel to inspect, so we are currently still working with a reduced team, it's been a tough time, but I have to tell you, I am very proud of my little team, because what they have achieved, the way they have reacted, the way we have reinvented ourselves as a company, the way we've gone into new verticals, created new systems, I mean, it's great, and, and the message I have is, don't be afraid of change. Um, it's a necessary skill to become a better person, company, a stronger employee, brand. And we continue to be in this all together, right? Um, and the commitment to sharing ideas through selfless communication that our industry is so well known for. Uh, so we can challenge each other in a healthy way to raise the bar in our industry and be a beacon of inspiration to other companies outside of the hospitality industry, looking to reinvent their customer experience. Yes, I, I totally agree. And I, you know, I would say to my team also, the only constant we have in life is change. 
and it's yeah. not how you uh, you know how you adjust yourself because obviously the pandemic has uh, badly hit the hospitality industry but instead of you know uh, sorrowing ourselves and 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 being uh, disappointed and sad and upset we have to act and we have to find uh, our way out and you know it's for me it's always innovation you have to innovate and you have to understand especially in the hospitality industry, what are the needs of the target clients? What can you even offer that you haven't even thought about? What, how is our life going to change in terms of traveling, living? Absolutely. And, and hospitality is already in the service sector. So I do see a lot of opportunities when you think about co-working, co-living. I mean, there are so many uh, amazing ideas that one can come up with so that I see it also very, very positive. You just have to you know, let go of some old beliefs. And, and also there's not only one way to do things, but many different ones. And uh, we have to find this together. To, you know, Absolutely. To and when it comes to the impact of design that Forbes Travel Guide uh, has, we, we do not dictate specific designs in, uh, in our standards, right? Uh, because we, the last thing we want to do is homogenize the industry. Yeah. But what we do do is we hold all properties accountable for the quality, comfort, and convenience the guest deserves and expects to experience, right? Um, and we hope that through our standards, whether you choose to stay at a contemporary high-tech hotel in Tokyo or a low-tech overwater bungalow hotel in the Maldives, how each hotel makes you feel through their service and attention to detail, that has to be memorable and consistent. That's what we are all about, right? Uh, we always say in Forbes Travel Guide, the moment we make the guests think or work harder, luxury vanishes, <laughs> right? So... Um, and we want people to be comfortable in their surroundings, in their guest rooms. So no, we don't, don't, we don't dictate what kind of design it is, but we look at it through the guest eyes and see how much that experience, how, how convenient is it, how much it is appreciated, and is it memorable? That's what is important for us. Yes, I, uh, I, I can't agree more. And especially when you talk about memorable, it's when you travel a lot and you can still remember one hotel from the other, then you know that something was done uh, right and especially i think you know by repeated uh, customers you already see a big of you know a success rate from properties that are truly special because if you leave with this urge to wanting to come back i mean if you can achieve that absolutely you know, design and service i mean that's all we need that's what it's all about well thank you so much for the interview and true you, pleasure thank you so much and we are all looking forward to the announcement of your sustainability uh, you know, new announcement of your new criteria. And I hope, I wish you all the success to continue. And thank you so much. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you for having me. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Philip Boyen, who is an expert in hospitality, as I'm sure you could see. So we are all looking forward to the new criteria of Forbes. And uh, please do comment, share, like, and um, any, any interesting uh, thoughts you have about other people that we should interview who are making an impact on sustainability, please let us know too. And see you next time.